In this tutorial, I will show you how to create this procedural coral rock material in Blender. If you'd like to help support the channel and purchase this material, then you can do that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. I'll have the links in the description. And you can also check out my Blender procedural material packs to purchase more of my materials. And if you'd like to learn how to create more procedural materials, then you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist where I show you how to create all of my procedural materials. So for this procedural material, I am going to be using the displacements in the node editor. So if you want to use the displacements in the node editor, then you will need to use the cycles rendering engine for this tutorial. So let me just show you what I have set up in the 3D space. So what I did is I added an icosphere and I subdivided it a few times so that it has some detail. And I do want this to be pretty subdivided because I am going to be giving it the displacements because it needs some extra geometry to actually displace the mesh. And then I also added a camera here and I pointed the camera at the icosphere. Now for the lighting I added in these two lights right here. So this first light right here is just a plane and I gave it a subdivision surface modifier so that it is round and then I scaled it up really big and I gave it an emission material with a strength of 100. And then I also gave it a bright blue color and I wanted to give it a bright blue color because this is a coral rock so this is the kind of rock that might be underwater and so I wanted to give it some blue light to make it look like it might be near a body of water or maybe underwater. And then I also added this other light right here and this is a plane which is kind of stretched up and I gave this plane a material with an emission and this emission has a strength of 50 and I gave this a very slight yellow color. And then also to get some blue reflections on the bottom here on the bottom of the coral rock I just added this plane right here and I just gave this plane a blue color just so that some blue reflections reflect off of the plane and give a little bit of a blue color on the coral rock. And then to get some nice realistic lighting and reflections, over here on the world I added in this Felsen Labyrinth 1K HDRI. So this is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com, link is in the description if you'd like to download it. So you can just add a new world and then you can click here on the color, click on the yellow dot and you can choose the environment texture and then you can just open up the HDRI. So now I'm going to set up the displacement settings. So just select whatever object you want to add the material onto and then you can click on new here to add a new material. And I can just rename this to Procedural Coral Rock. So now we need to change some of the settings so that it can actually use the displacements. So I'm going to click right up here on the render properties and make sure here on the render engine that you are using the cycles render engine because the node editor displacements doesn't work in Eevee. So make sure you're using cycles if you want to use the displacements. And then I am also going to be using the adaptive displacements. So if you want to use the adaptive displacement, I am going to be setting this feature set here to experimental. So now that this is set to experimental, I can go right over here to the modifier modifier properties and I gave this object a subdivision surface modifier so you can click on add modifier and add the subdivision surface and because we turned on the experimental mode we now have the adaptive subdivision so I'm going to click on that to turn it on and then I will just turn the dicing scale of 5. So this way where we're closer up to the mesh it's going to subdivide it more and give it more detail for the displacements but then if we're farther away it'll give it less detail. Now there is one more thing we need to do to get the displacements to work we need to click right down here on the material properties and then I'm going to close this and I'm going to scroll down here go to the settings and under the surface tab under settings we need to change the displacement from bump only to displacement and bump so this is telling this material that it can use the displacements so I'm just going to make this smaller and then just one more thing I'm going to do before I set up the material I'm going to be using the node wrangler add-on so if you don't have the add-on enabled you can just click on edit and go to the preferences and then over there on the add-ons tab you can can search for the node wrangler and just check mark the node wrangler add-on. All right, so we can now start with the procedural material. So to start off, I want to create a texture that we can use to make all those little holes in the rocks. So to do this, I'm going to press shift A. Let's go to the search here and I'm going to search for the Voronoi texture and we're just going to drop the Voronoi texture here. And then because the node wrangler add-on is turned on, I can control shift and select different nodes and that's going to add this viewer node here and we can preview the different nodes on the objects. 
And then with the Voronoi texture selected, I'm also going to press Control T. That is going to add the texture coordinate and the mapping. And then I want to use the object coordinates. So I'm going to plug the object into the vector. And by using the object coordinates, it's going to place the texture on the object more evenly. Now I don't actually need the mapping node because the mapping node just changes the location and rotation and scale the texture. I'm just going to click on the mapping node and press X to delete it. I can just bring the texture coordinate over. So now let's change some settings on the Voronoi. So I want to turn the scale up a bit, so I'm going to turn the scale value up to like a 14. Now I also want it to be a little bit more smooth, so I'm going to click on this F1 right here, and I'm going to change this to Smooth F1. So this is pretty much exactly the same, except that we now have this smoothness value. I can make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. So if I turn the smoothness value all the way to zero, now it's just acting like the normal F1, but then I can turn the smoothness value up, and now right in here in between those dots it's going to be more smooth. Now I do want it to be a little bit smooth, but not that much, so I'm just going to turn the smoothness value to like a 0.2. So a 0.2 is pretty good. Now I also want to give a tiny little bit of distortion to these circles because the circles are very smooth and round. So I'm going to add a node in here to actually change the vector of the Voronoi. So it's going to change how the texture is placed on the object. So I'm going to press Shift A. Let's go to the search here and I'm going to search for a noise texture and we're going to drop the noise texture right in here. So now the noise texture is distorting the placement of the Voronoi texture. And then let's change some settings here. So I want to turn the scale up. So I'm going to turn this up to like a 15 so it is smaller. And then I do want to give this noise texture lots of detail. So let's bring the detail all the way up to the max, which is 15. Now if you look at the texture, you can see that it's totally gotten rid of the Voronoi look. So it doesn't have all those little dots. And that's because the noise texture is distorting the Voronoi way too much. So I want to make it less strong of an effect. So I'm going to press Shift A, let's go to the search, and I'm going to search for the Mix RGB, and we're just going to stick the Mix RGB in between the Noise Texture and the Voronoi. So now I want to mix the Noise Texture with the original Object Texture Coordinates. So I'm going to take the Object from the Texture Coordinate, and I'm going to put that into Color 1, and then this Noise Texture, the color here can go into Color 2. So I can now change this Factor value, and if I turn the Factor all the way to 0, it's not using the Noise Texture at all, but then if I turn the factor all the way up to 1, it's using all of the noise texture. So I can now just change this to my liking. Now as I change the factor value, it's kind of moving the texture around, so to make that not happen, I can click on this mix right here, and I can change this to linear light. So now if I change the factor value, you can see it's not really moving the texture around, it's staying where it is. So I want to make this very very subtle, because I do want to be able to see mostly the dots, but I just want the dots to be distorted a little bit, so they look a little bit more organic and natural. Natural. So on the factor value right here, I'm going to turn this way down to a 0 0.01. So just a 0 0.01. So if you zoom in there, it is very subtle, but you can see without it, it's just perfectly straight, especially if you zoom into one of these. If you turn the factor way all the way to zero, it is very smooth and circular. But then if you turn the factor to 0 0.01, now it's just a little bit distorted. And you can also see there's just a little bit of subtle noise there, and that's going to make it look more organic. So I'm going to press B for the box select, click and drag a box around these nodes, and I'm going to bring them back a little bit, and also bring them down. So I now want to put this into the normal to give it some bump. So what I'm going to do is take the distance here from the Voronoi, and I'm going to stick that into the normal of the principled BSDF. And then I can control shift and select the principled shader to preview it. Now you can see there's a really weird effect here, and that is because this is black and white data. You can see there is a gray dot right here, but this is normal data because it is a purple dot. So what we need to do is put a node in here to convert the color data or the black and white data into normal data so the principal shader can actually use it. So to do this, I'm going to press Shift A. Let's go to the search, and I'm going to search for the bump node, and we're going to stick the bump node right in here between the Voronoi and the principal. And then to convert it to normal data, we actually want to take the distance and we want to put that into the height value. So now you can see it actually looks like it's bumping out the mesh. Now this is a bit strong and I do want to have it less strong. So I'm going to turn the strength value to like a 0.4. 
So a 0.4, and now you can see it's not quite as strong. Now, if you look here on the sides, you can see it's not actually popping out the mesh, and that is because the normal is just a fake bump, so it appears as though it's displacing the actual mesh shape, but it's actually just a fake bump. So we are going to use the normal, but then we are also going to use the displacement to actually displace the mesh. But the normal will still help to add more detail to the material. So I'm going to take the Voronoi texture distance, and I'm going to pull out a wire, and I'm going to bring my mouse right up here and I'm going to stick this into the displacement of the material output. Now you can see that it is doing something but it's really messed up and that is again because this is black and white data this is just color data but then this over here this needs to be displacement data so we need a node in here to convert the color data or the black and white data into displacement data so I'm going to press shift a let's go to the search and I'm going to search for the displacement node and I'm going to stick the displacement node right here in this wire and then I can just drag the displacement right down here and stick it underneath the principled shader. And I think I'll actually just box select these nodes and bring them down a little bit. All right, now to actually convert this to a displacement data, I actually wanna put this distance value right here into the height of the displacement. And now it is actually displacing the mesh and that is starting to look very cool. And you can even see there's those little circles there from this Voronoi texture. Now it is way too strong. It's like bumping out a lot and it's super sharp. So I wanna make it much more subtle. Subtle. So on the displacement node right here, I can just turn the displacement way down, the scale here. So I'm going to turn the scale down to like a 0.14 just a 0.14 and now that is looking much better and that is starting to look very cool. So now you can see we have all those little dots in there and then those other parts which are kind of popping out. And this is very white so just for now to be able to see this a bit better I'm going to take the base color and I'm going to make that kind of a dark color and it kind of allows you to see that a bit better. But later on we will be adding another texture into the base color to change the actual color. Now I want a little bit more randomness in the displacement because right now it's kind of even all over and it's all just popping out and it's pretty sharp but I want some areas to be kind of going back in and some areas to be coming out and also I don't want all of the little holes to be all over the rock I just want it to be in some places here and there so what I'm going to do is click on this noise texture and I want to duplicate it so I'm going to press shift D that's going to duplicate the noise texture and actually what you can do is you can select the noise texture and you can instead press control shift D so control shift D is going to duplicate the node but it's going to keep the the wire plugged up to it. So I'm going to just bring this noise texture over here and stick it underneath the Voronoi and we are going to use this noise texture in the displacement to kind of change it up a bit and also give it a little bit more noise. Now I'm going to control shift and select the noise texture so that I can preview it. So I want to change the scale of this because that is way too small there's like lots of detail so I'm going to turn the scale right here to just like a two and that way there are some much bigger colors. You can see some parts are lighter and some parts are darker but then I do want to leave the detail up to the max which is 15 because I do want it to be very detailed. So we are going to use this noise texture and mix it into the displacement. Before we do that though I do want to make it more contrasty. So to do this I'm going to press shift A. Let's go to the search and I'm going to search for the mix RGB and I'm going to stick the mix RGB right here before the displacement node. So this mix RGB is going to allow us to mix colors together. So I can now take the factor from the noise texture and I'm going to put it into this factor here of the mix RGB. And then I can also control shift and select the mix RGB to preview it. So we are mixing the noise texture and the Voronoi together. And I also want to take color two and I want to make this fully black. Now you can see that it's not doing a whole lot and that is because this noise texture is actually pretty grayed out and I want to make it more contrasty. So to make it more contrasty, I can press shift A, let's go to the search and I can search for the color ramp and I'm just going to stick the color ramp right here between the noise texture and the mix. And then just to preview it, I can control shift and select the color ramp. So you can see it's very gray. Some parts are a little bit lighter and some parts are a little bit darker, but it is pretty gray. So if I now take these two color values and and I drag them together it's going to make it more contrasty and also you can see that as I make it more contrasty it's going to distort the displacement more because the displacement node uses the white values and the dark values to know how much it's going to displace the mesh so I'm going to drag the black tab over here and then I'm also going to drag the white tab out to about here so pretty close so now you can see where those dark parts are they're popping out more but then where the light parts are they're going back in a bit and that's going to give more randomness to the object and give it a better shape. 
So I can now hold down the Control and Shift key and then select the principled shader to preview it. So you can now see that the object shape is much more random because some parts over here are more flat, but then there's also some other parts right over here where the mesh is bumping out a lot more. And also some of these areas have deeper holes, whereas some other parts over here don't have any holes. Now I do also want to change the color of the Voronoi texture because I do want to bring out those holes a little bit and make them a bit sharper. So I'm going to press Shift Shift A, let's go to the search, and I'm going to search for the color ramp node. Let's click on the color ramp, and I'm going to drop it right in here after the Voronoi texture. And I'm going to press B for the box select, just box select these nodes and bring them back a little bit. So everything after the Voronoi texture, I actually want to use the color ramp instead. So what I'm going to do is actually take the color here from this color ramp and put that into the height value of the bump, and I can just bring this up. So now the Voronoi texture is going into the color ramp, and then the color ramp can go into the bump and the mix. So if I look at those holes, you can see they're not actually super sharp. So what I can do is I can take this white tab right here and I can drag it over. And now that I've dragged this over, this color ramp is sharpening up the values because we are bringing it over. And so now those holes have a much sharper opening. So now you can really see there's that contrast between these smooth areas. You can see there's some smooth areas here, and then the bigger areas right here where the noise texture is. And where it is popping out more, those holes are also deeper, whereas right over here where the mesh is smoother, the holes aren't popping out quite as much. Now those holes are actually pretty deep. You can see how dark they are. So if I change this black tab right here, that is going to make the holes less deep. So if I click on the black tab, I can turn it up, and if I turn the black tab really high up, you can see now those holes aren't very deep, but if I turn it down and make it darker, then the holes are going to be deeper. So I'm just going to change this color to kind of like a dark gray, and so now those holes aren't quite as deep, but they are still pretty deep. Now I also want to give this object just some noisy bump all over the mesh because if I zoom in here to the smooth areas you can see they're very smooth and that's not really realistic. So what I can do is I can take this noise texture and I can put it into the bump. So I'm going to take this bump node and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it and I'm just going to drop it right here and then I can bring these nodes over. So this bump node is converting the Voronoi texture into normal data and then this bump node the bump can just go through the normal and then the normal into the normal. So now on this bump node we have have this extra height value that we can add data into. So what I can do is I can take the factor from this noise texture, I can pull out a wire, and I'm going to bring this over and stick it into the height value of the second bump. And that way it's going to convert that to normal data. Now it is a bit strong, so I'm just going to take the strength value on the second bump and just turn that down to like a 0.3 so it's not quite as strong. But now that coral rock has a bunch of noise all over the place. All right, now I also want to put this noise texture into the roughness so that some parts are a little bit more rough and then other parts are a little bit more shiny. So I'm going to take the factor, let's pull out a wire, and I'm going to bring this all the way over, and I'm going to stick it into the roughness value of the principle. Now I want to have more control over this, so I'm going to press Shift A, let's go to the search, and I'm going to search for the color ramp node, and let's stick the color ramp right in here before the roughness. So I can now change the color ramp colors, and that'll make it more rough or more shiny. So I can click on the black tab here, and if I I turn the black tab up and make it more white, you can see that now that rock is very, very rough. Now I don't want it to be super rough, I do want it to be a little bit shiny, so I'm just going to make this kind of like a gray color. So just something like this, kind of like a dark gray color. So we are almost done with this material, but right now this base color is just gray, and I want to give it a few different colors, kind of make some brownish colors and some reddish colors. So what I want to do is I want to use another noise texture so that the colors are a little bit different and random. So let's click on this noise texture and I'm going to press Control shift d to duplicate it and let's bring it up here and the object is still plugged up to the vector. And then I can Control shift and select the noise texture to preview it. So this is very detailed and the scale is turned up quite a bit, but I don't want the scale to be turned up that big, so I'm going to turn the scale down to just like an 8 but then I do want it to be very detailed, so I'll leave the detail to the max, which is 15. So I can now just take the factor value, I'm going to pull out a wire, and I'm going to bring this over, and I'm going to stick this into the principled shader. And then I can Control shift and select the principled to preview it. Now right now it's just kind of white and black, and so I want to change the colors. So let's just click on this color ramp, and I can press shift D to duplicate it, and we're going to stick it right here in the wire going before the base color. So for this first First tab right here, I'm going to drag this out a little bit, kind of bring it over to here, and then I'm going to click on the color, and I'm going to make this color kind of like a dark brownish reddish color. 
And if you want to use the same color that I'm using over here on the hex value, you can punch in 31140B. That's the color that I'll be using. And then I'm also going to bring this tab out a bit, kind of bring it into the center here. And then this one, I just want to make kind of like a brown color and make it a little bit darker. And again, to use the same color that I'm using, you can go to the hex and you can type in 8A. 5D four zero. And then I do want to add one more color. I want to add kind of a lighter color. So I'm going to hold down the control key and then just click right here to add another tab. And I'm going to drag this tab over here. And then this color is going to be similar, but it's going to be a bit brighter and a bit more of a tannish kind of yellowish color. And the hex value for this one is going to be BF 9B7C. So those are the colors that I'm going to be using. So now you can see we have some really nice colors there for the coral rock. And then just one last thing that I did real quick, if you go right over here to the render properties, right down here in the color management, I set the view transform to filmic for more realistic lighting, and I set the look here to a very high contrast. And that's going to pop out the colors and make everything more contrasty. So that is it. That is the finished procedural material. So I'll just give this a final render. So thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you'd like to help support me and this channel and purchase the procedural material, you can do that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. Links are in the description. And you can also check out my Blender procedural material packs if you'd like to get more of my materials. And that's also a great way to help support this channel. And you can also check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist on YouTube if you'd like to learn how to create more more procedural material tutorials. And if you enjoyed this video and would like to give me a little tip, you can send a super thanks underneath this video here on YouTube, and I do appreciate all of your support. But I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and thank you for watching.